One of the most spectacular demonstrations that I've seen is the Hungry Dragon demonstration, and many people have done this. It is potassium chlorate heating up to the point that it is molten, and then some kind of a carbohydrate or an organic fuel will be dropped into it, usually a gummy bear or some other piece of candy or sugar dropped in there, and a very rapid reaction happens. There are several places that you can use this demonstration, but one of the interesting variations I found is that instead of potassium chlorate, you can also use sodium chlorate, and you can treat this as a demonstration not only to demonstrate classes of chemical reactions, thermal reactions, oxidation reduction reactions, but you can also tie it into atomic structure and periodicity and the flame tests. Now, by this time in the year, my students understand that sodium gives a gold flame and potassium gives a lavender flame, and they've recognized those, they've done the flame test labs, and they've already seen that. So at the end of the year, when we start getting into oxidation and reduction reactions, this is a nice way to refresh something that we covered early in the year and gives us a nice variation to sort of sum up the year and make them realize just how much information they've gained for over the course of the year. One important thing to talk about before I do this demonstration is the safety precautions that we're taking. When I do this in my classroom, I have a fume hood. I put it in the fume hood. This entire setup we have set here is because we don't have access to a fume hood in the filming studio. But in the fume hood, I have this reaction set up. I have a gas line that does run into my fume hood, and I heat it up inside of the fume hood. As soon as I drop the candies in, I pull the sash down and I step away. All of my students have their safety goggles in in the laboratory. I step out of the way more so they can see what's going on, not because I want them to get hit with whatever is going to happen. But there are four walls now when you pull the sash down. They can still see everything that's going on. This reaction also generates a whole lot of particulate matter that goes up into the, into the air, and it can make your room very, very stifling if you don't have good ventilation. So this is not a good demonstration to do if you don't have proper ventilation or a fume hood. And if you don't have a fume hood, you definitely need to have some kind of a purge fan above this and safety shields and blast shields to prevent anything that might go to the side. It is very important to operate with this safely. Potassium chlorate and sodium chlorate in contact with anything that contains carbon can create some kind of reaction. So rubber stoppers, uh, candy, the rubber soles of your shoes if some of it falls on the floor. Potassium chloride needs to be measured out onto a surface that's clean and you need to make sure you clean it up afterward and that you don't treat this carelessly. This is something to be very cautious with. I've already put the sodium chlorate into the test tube on your right or on your left hand side. I'm going to add the potassium chlorate to the test tube on the right. I've already masked these out. This is five grams of each of the two chlorates. And the chlorate will undergo a decomposition reaction. When we start heating this up, you'll see the potassium chlorate going from KClO3 to KCl, and there'll be some oxygen as well. But the important thing for the demonstration is that you need to get these both into the liquid phase. So I'm going to heat these up with a meeker burner. And if we can turn the gas on. Thank you. When we heat these up with the meeker burner, they're going to start to get very, very warm. We want to get to the point that both of them melt. By having them side by side, all of the heat that's generated by the meeker burner is going to melt both the compounds, and they both melt about the same time. You can take the gas down just a smidge, and a little bit more than that. You do want to watch that your flame does not get so high that you start to melt your test tubes. And as you can see, the sodium chloride is already starting to go molten. The potassium chloride is going molten. And if you look carefully, you can actually start to see small bubbles being generated. That's some of the oxygen that's already starting to come out of the decomposition reaction as these start to melt. And uh, these are just about melted, so we can cut the gas off. Thank you. Make sure you cut the gas off. I usually just take the burner out of the way and turn it off. These will stay melted for a while and will already start generating the gas. Now it's very important that whatever candies you're using, I'm using uh, just little gummy bears here, that you have both of them added with tongs. Do not try to do this with your fingers. You need to add them with tongs and step away and I'll do that now. So you can see the really brilliant gold flame on the left side for the sodium, and then the lavender, bright lavender flame that's being formed on the right side from the potassium. 
So the sodium gave us the gold flame, the potassium gives us the lavender pink flame. So you can tie back in the periodicity and atomic structure that you covered at the beginning of the year with another demonstration at the end. Now you can also see we've got a purge fan above here. You can see the large amount of smoke and particulate matter. Most of this is potassium chloride and sodium chloride, so it's not that hazardous to breathe. However, it's not good stuff to inhale and it doesn't, does, can cause you to choke a little bit. We can keep that running. You can hear me over the top of it. So there are a couple of places you can put this into your curriculum. I usually put it at the end of the year when I start covering oxidation rea reduction reactions, but this is easily something you can put in types of reactions. You have the decomposition of potassium chloride and so potassium chlorate into potassium chloride and sodium chlorate into sodium chloride plus oxygen. You can also tie in the nice combustion reaction because of the very high concentration of oxygen that is generated by this reaction you get a very, very fast combustion, a very fast burning of these, where if you just tried to burn them in air, they would kind of smolder. So you can also tie this into kinetics and talking about the effects of concentration on a reaction rate. The high amount of oxygen causes the reaction to go faster. And then obviously you have a very powerful oxidation reduction reaction here. That's another place that this can go into your curriculum. My students get a very, very big kick out of this as one of their top demonstrations when I give them my evaluations at the end of the school year. They always list this as one of their absolute favorites. But it's a nice variation that allows you to not only just talk about oxidation reduction, but allows you to tie in the atomic structure periodicity as well. Thank you.